up. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the yoga house. Yay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start. We'll start in mountain pose. Welcome. <clears throat> so you're making your way up to a standing position, just stand near the top of your mat, perhaps, leaving a little space between your toes and the front edge of your mat. As you're able, even just for the first few breaths, you might stand with your feet about hip distance apart, toes forward. Again, just for a couple of breaths, if you can hold that posture, stay just like this. But if that starts to feel a little odd in your hips or knees or ankles, feel free to adjust. You can just take your feet out a little wider, even turn your feet outward, because that might feel a bit more natural. So just as long as you feel connected to the ground, an even distribution of weight between both feet, we'll begin our practice here. As you're making this connection, just find breath. Notice your breath. You might even start with a few deep breaths, just to get reacquainted with your breathing, and then just settle into just slow, steady breaths. Feel free to keep your eyes open, and if you are keeping your eyes open, just gaze forward or slightly downward a soft gaze or close your eyes and look inward. Perhaps set a personal intention for your practice today. Just moving inward, becoming more aware, more present. Our practice today will focus on just flowing, moving with the body, and we'll add some twists in this practice as well. <clears throat> as you breathe in, just feel your breath rising upward, filling up your lungs. Nice expansive breath. And as you exhale, draw your navel inward towards your spine, the light contraction of your abdominal muscles, engaging center. Again, as you breathe in, feel breath rising, filling up your lungs, that nice expansive feeling across the upper body from shoulder to shoulder. Your exhale, that light engagement of the abdominal lock to moving inward and slightly upward sensation. Actually, Uriana, Uriana, Banda. Uriana means upward. Hold on to this connection. Let it guide you and support you in your moving practice. And as we now prepare our bodies to move, take three more breaths. When you're ready, <clears throat> inhale and extend your arms overhead and just read it like a nice stretch. Reach all the way up and exhale will fold forward. So a good hinge from your hips, bend your knees as much as you need to as you make your way down towards your toes. And of course, you don't have to touch your toes. Maybe your hands land at your shins or even at your knees. Then inhale, slide your hands up the legs a bit to extend the spine. So really rise up halfway and exhale, fold right back down to a forward fold. We're going to hold here for several breaths. Again, this can be a partial fold. You don't have to go all the way down. If you need to adjust, <clears throat> just bring the hands back up the legs. Even just rest your hands on your legs. Just in case there's a bit of a strain on your back or your legs, you can soften that up. Wherever you are, just keep this connection with your breath. Even add movement here. It might be just a circle of your shoulders of a circle sensation with the arms, like you're stirring a pot of soup. Check in with your head and neck. Maybe a slow nodding, yes. Slowly shaking your head, no. 
Even a sway of the upper body, left and right a few times. Just anything that might feel good here. <clears throat> a couple more breaths. When you go to another halfway lift, you'll inhale, just slide your hands up the legs until you just rise up halfway. So we create a long, flat back. We're going to hold <clears throat> this posture, half forward fold. Just a nice elongation through the spine. Feel like your tailbone is reaching for the back of the room while your, your crown is reaching for the front of the room. And now we'll finish the standing, shifting your weight into your heels, bend your knees and lower your hips like you're sitting down into a chair, lifting your chest, then yeah, then spread your wings and reach all the way up, big stretch there, then exhale, you can bring your hands down to your heart or arms down to your side, either one. Hold for a moment as you feel the re-extension of the legs and spine. Let's go through that half salute once again. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Good energy in your fingers. Exhale, leading with your heart. Fold forward. Take your time through this pose and any pose we move into. Inhale, slide your hands up the legs a bit to help extend the spine. Exhale, we'll fold all the way down or a partial fold. Ready to stand, shift your weight into your heels. Bend your knees, lower your hips. Lift your heart, arms out to the side. Inhale, rising all the way up, extended mountain pose. Exhale, hands to heart or arms to your side. Couple breaths here. And continuing to move with breath <clears throat> at your own pace. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up halfway. Again, feel the crown of your head lead you forward. This exhale will fold, bend your knees. All the way down we go. So you can place your hands on your mat. Walk or step or even hop both feet back to the back end of your mat. Straightening the body. <clears throat> so we are in a straight line here. Plank pose, high push-up position. Take a breath in. And the exhale, take, bend your knees a little. Send your hips up into the air. This should guide you right into Downward Facing Dog. This is our shortcut to Down Dog. I usually do that the first time in the sequence. You can do it every time if you'd like. And once you're in Down Dog, just arrive, hold here for a breath or two, but feel free to add movement. Yeah, pedaling the feet to stretch your calves, get into your toes, let your knees bend, even a good movement of your hips side to side. Getting ready to move from here. Another full breath in as you're able, fill up your lungs. Exhale, draw navel inward. Then bend your knees so you can walk, step or hop. Both feet return to the top of your mat. You'll be in forward fold. Once here, inhale, extend through your spine. Even a little weight shift towards your toes so it feels like you're really coming forward. Exhale, back down that weight shift, back into the heels. So you can bend your knees, hips lower. Then inhale, rising up, reaching into the sky. This exhale, move right into chair pose. Let's just keep the body in motion. Going into our next sequence. So chair pose, breathing in while we're here. Then exhale, diving out of your seat. Back down towards toes, forward fold. Inhale, long spine, just lifting halfway up. And exhale all the way down to place your hands on your mat. Take your time as you need to. Walk or step or jump the feet back into plank pose. As before, you can take that same shortcut to down dog by bending your knees and floating the hips up or finish the push up. Bend your elbows, squeeze them in towards your ribs with an exhale and lower your way down to Chaturanga Dandasana. Find a back bend here, maybe a low cobra or an upward facing dog. Then exhale into downward facing dog. Whatever flow you decide to choose there will always finish in downward facing. Let's add a lunge. Inhale, extend your right leg up behind you. Doesn't have to lift high, just long behind you. Exhale, send right foot to the top of the mat near right hand. Once you've landed, turn your left heel down to the floor be behind you. Good, yes, shifting your weight back <clears throat> so you can find balance in the feet. Light hand so you can easily hinge from hips to rise up. Warrior one, opening the heart. Exhale, hinge through the hips, fold, make your way back down. Hands to the ground, let's slide or step that right foot back, plank pose. Again, the shortcut to down dog's fine, or chaturanga. Here's a variation, you can set the knees down to the floor first, then the chest. 
a little lift of the chest for your back bend, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Once in down dog, inhale, extend left leg up and away, reaching long, exhale, nice stepping left foot to the top of the mat. If you don't make it, just wiggle the toes forward or pick up the foot and place it, perfect. Right heel turns to the floor, shift that weight back into that back foot, so you have light hands, hinge from the hips, rising up, opening up, first warrior, and our exhale to close the lid of the box, come back down, plant your hands, and just draw that left foot back. Plank pose, complete the series as you'd like, meeting together in downward facing dog. And once you're in down dog, a couple breaths, you might even need to adjust the feet a little bit, maybe even your hands to help you settle, settle into the posture. One more breath here, I'm gonna do some floor work. So let's bring the knees to the ground, just kneel down, sit back briefly in hero. Then off to the side, sitting down so you can swing the feet around to the front. Sit in the center of your mat and roll down onto your back. You're going to draw your knees to chest, so a little hug here. Feel free to add some movement, maybe left and right. You can rock forward and back, create circles. Reconnect with your breath. All right, just keep hold of your knees or shins, lightly flex your feet, and then take the legs wide. And just doing a little hip opener here, get a little stretch in the inner legs. We're just gonna keep the legs like this. It's like we're moving into happy baby pose, but we're not gonna kick the feet up, just keep them here. Sometimes I might call this uh, a, a frog lying on its back. It's a little stretch, not here long. And then we'll bring the knees back together and then extend the legs into the air. Again, a nice uh, light flex in the feet, heels reaching for the ceiling. Legs might be straight. They can even have a bend in the knees. Just hold on to the legs with your hands for a few breaths. One more breath. And then we'll bend the knees, set the feet onto the floor. Before we move into bridge pose, let's add our first twist. Let's actually do a windshield wiper twist. So take the feet wide, right out to the edges of your mat. And then slowly take both knees to the left. And just because we're going to the left, it's going to affect your right side, since that right knee, that right leg is turning inward. So it's going to have more of a an effect on that on your low back area and to create a little bit more length through that low back right side space you might even extend your right arm behind you just a couple breaths here just to create a little space in the low back and hips all right you bring your arm back down by your side let's bring the knees back up to center Pause there for a couple seconds as the body realigns. We'll do our windshield wiper to the other side. So slowly taking knees, both knees over to the right side, and this will affect the left leg in low back space. Again, if you want to add a little bit more sensation, feel free to extend your left arm behind you and reach. Two more breaths. Bring your arm back down by your side. Let's bring the knees back up to center. We take bridge pose. Now your feet are wide here. You certainly can keep them wide or adjust them to the space that feels just right for you when you do move into bridge. When you're ready, inhale, just fill up your lungs. Exhale, empty your belly, even feel that engagement in your core center. Use that energy to now lift your hips up into the air. Even with hips lifted, you can still adjust the feet. If you need to, get them into a, a good spot, what good leverage. So you can lift and hold, even use your hands to help lift yourself up or hold yourself up if you need to. And even to assist the upper body, and even to allow it to lift a little higher. I like to bend my arms so that 
arms are at 90 degrees, pressing down into the ground with the elbows and triceps. Just helps to lift and open the upper body a bit more. About three more breaths here. And even just being aware of the sensations that are created in this very active pose. When we're ready to come out of the posture, start by wiggling the feet forward a little bit, extend your arms straight up into the air to release the shoulders, and then roll your way down slowly. Once you've landed, extend the whole body. Take your both arms behind you, reach both legs straight out in front, and lengthen in these opposite directions. And then when you're ready, hug both knees into chest. You can rock your way up to seated or even roll to one side and press yourself up to seated. And we'll make our way into boat pose here. Yep. Now you can do boat pose with feet on the floor, something like this, so bent knees and just hold onto the legs. This is a, one variation of the posture. We might lean back a little bit more so you can lift the feet, keeping the knees bent if you want or straighten the legs, just active feet. You can point your toes or flex the feet. You can always bend. Just be sure your torso feels long. Good breathing. Fill up your lungs with each inhale. Exhaling even through the mouth to engage your abdominal system. We'll take a breath, ready to move here. And the exhale as you're able, cross legs, if you can, hands in front to hop back into plank or even just hands to the side, unravel the legs and Swing or step the feet back and just arrive in plank pose, just a strong straight line. We'll take a shortcut together into down dog. Bend your knees, send your hips into the air. Again, make those adjustments with feet and hands. Arrive in the posture. Let's add on to our lunge sequence. Inhale, extend right leg up behind you. With your exhale, step through. Right foot to the top of the mat. Take your time as you make this transition. Left heel to the floor. Find your center. Rising up first, warrior good. Opening up through the heart, extended arms. Exhale, opening to your left side. Dropping the arms down to parallel, you'll be in warrior two. Very nice, good adjustments with the feet. Want to create a nice, strong, solid foundation, balance, yeah. Right knee and toes are pointing forward, looks nice. Then our side angle pose, follow the right arm forward to angle the upper half of the body. And just rotating here. I typically stay up high in the pose. You can do the same or go down much lower if you'd like. Your fingertips might touch the ground or bring in a set of blocks if you'd like. Okay, stay here, but bring your left hand down behind you, perhaps to your low back. Even roll this left shoulder back, holding it back just to open up through the chest a little bit more. Feel like the top of your head, wherever it's pointing, it's, bring, it's taking you forward, helping you to extend through the torso. Now an inhale to re-extend left hand up into the air. And exhale, we'll turn, we'll fold, bring the hands down to the mat. Let's step back into plank pose. Again, drawing that straight line in the body. And another shortcut to down dog, soft knees, hips float up into the air and adjust the feet and hands. Inhale to extend your left leg up and away. Again, not worried about the height, just the extension. Exhale, stepping through. Even if you don't make it all the way, you might set your right knee down, go and go pick up the left foot, step it up higher. Right heel to the floor, shifting back. So your hands are light, rising up first warrior. Exhale, opening to your second warrior, adjusting the feet as you need to. Solid ground, solid position. Side angle, Parshva Panasana, shifting forward. Extending the arms up and down, opening up through the heart space. Staying here, but bring right hand down behind you, maybe to your low back or even your right hip. Roll the right shoulder back, hold it back through the heart open, through the torso lengthen, just following the direction of the crown of your head. Ready to move. Inhale, re-extend your right hand up into the air. Or exhale, turn and fold, hands down to the ground. Back to our plank pose. 
You can take that same shortcut to down dog or finish the sequence with Chaturanga Dandasana. Find a back bend here. And finishing in downward facing. Once in down dog, breathe in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, core engagement, bend your knees, hop, step, or walk. Both feet return to the top of the mat to your forward fold. Inhale, spinal extension. Another fold here, releasing. Your weight shift into the heels, bend your knees. Inhale, reverse your swan dive. Let's come up, reach into the air. And exhale, bring your arms down to your side. Good. So finishing that warm-up sequence there. Check in with your body, shoulders, elbows, your wrists and fingers hips, your knees, even down to your feet and toes. I'm just going to get ready for our balancing. Do tree pose here. So just return to mountain pose. Again, balanced on two feet, grounded, soft knees, and then a weight shift into your right foot. Yes, press into the ground, strong leg, active foot. Lengthen through the spine, nice and tall, breathing in. Exhale, core engagement, ready now to pick up the left foot and be flexed foot, active leg here. We'll swing the knee out even just a bit is fine or all the way to the side of the room and placing foot on the inside of the standing leg. Low is fine, down by the floor, below the knee or above the knee. Once you're in place, extend both arms up into the air and inhale to reach and lift. Exhale, make sure you keep that core connection. I always like just lifting the knee and then swinging out. I just like that transition because it is a hip opener, just to emphasize that sensation. Very nice. Keep arms extended. We'll swing that right knee forward now, closing that door, and placing the foot back down on the ground, balance on two feet, and your arms can back, come back down to your side. You can shake all that loose. Perfect. <clears throat> because you can certainly go into the pose and just kind of slide the foot up, Again, I, I kind of break it down, bringing it forward, because that's more of a natural movement, and then taking it out. Okay, other side. Soft knees, start shifting weight into your uh, left foot, root into the ground, nice and tall here. Exhaling, core engagement, then we're ready. Here's our foot lifting, energized foot, maybe the thighs parallel to the floor, swinging it out. Again, you can stop there or all the way out, mm -hmm. foot to the inner leg high, medium, or low. Then your inhale to take the arms straight up into the air. Then they might go straight up, arms close to the ears or out a little wider. I think for me, that gives a little bit more space in the shoulders and neck. You can always bend your elbows. You can even bring hands to heart here. No worries. Just to focus forward or slightly downward. A little moment of concentration, focus. Balance, yes. Arms stay extended, let's swing the right knee forward. Now lifting knee with the flexed foot, plant the foot into the ground, arms can come back down to your side, finishing that sequence, perfect. Yep, shake it all loose, check in with your feet. <clears throat> all right, since we're in standing still, let's take a uh, chair pose and add a bit of a twist. You're, if you have a block, you're welcome to use a block here. This is just an option today. You can just hold onto the block between the thighs, a little squeeze, just a reminder of centering and stabilizing, stabilizing the hips. Whenever you're ready, an inhale, taking arms up. Exhale, take your chair pose. It could be a high seat like this. Certainly could be a much lower seat. Okay, whatever feels good for your hips and back and knees. Let's bring hands to heart center, yes. Inhale, feel like you're elongating through the spine more. Exhale, pull belly in, squeeze the block or an imaginary block and a bit of a twist to your right. Doesn't have to be too much or too far. Just a rotation until you just naturally stop. That's a twist because you've moved away from center and that's perfect. Yes. Now, in a, in a way, think back when you were in side angle pose and you had an arm behind you and I said, extend through the torso, lead through the crown of your head. Similar here, wherever your head is pointing, feel like you're going that direction. Just to help elongate through the spine, even though it's rotating. Okay, breathe in. And our exhale, unwinding. Place hands on your thighs. Press into the thighs just to assist yourself standing. Let's take the arms up into the air to get some length and space. Return to chair pose. And you can go ahead and bring hands to heart. 
high seat or a low seat or somewhere in between, whatever's good. Breathing in, more extension through the spine, exhale, engaging core, inner legs, and your mild twist to the left. Same thing, you, if, if you happen to be low enough and you have the mobility and flexibility, your right elbow might come to the outside of the knee or thigh right there, okay? Don't have to go there. For me, that's kind of a deep sensation, okay? So yeah, just find that marker that feels just right for you today. And then that same extending quality through the spine. Crown is coming forward. Your hips and tailbone feel like they're going to the back of the room. There you go. Breathe in, nicely done. Exhale, unwind. Again, hands on thighs. If you happen to have a block, let's remove the block. and Let's all fold. Just come to a forward fold. And just leave your block on the ground, releasing head, neck, and shoulders, and continuing the flow. Inhale, monkey. Flat back, rising halfway up. Exhale, fold and bend. Hands to the floor, hop or step back. Plank pose. Come down if you'd like. Chaturanga Dandasana or some variation of a flow here. Mix it up, change it up as you like. Upward facing dog or some other back bend, finishing in downward facing. I love it, love it. all the options there. Here we go, inhale, extend right leg up when you're ready. Let's open this up, bend your knee, bring your heel down toward your backside with a simple lift of the knee. It doesn't have to lift high or hard. Okay, with that little lift, you actually create a little twist in the spine and it opens the hip there too. Breathing in right where you are, and you'll exhale to unwind and step through. Right foot to the top of the mat, back to our warrior one. Take your time, left heel to the floor, rising when you are ready. Exhale, opening to the left side of the room, warrior two. Settling in, adjust your feet, feel solid, <clears throat> grounded. Side angle, reaching forward, rotate the arms. First, just feel the energized hand, left hand reaching towards the ceiling, opening and then bring that left hand down behind you. Keep it there. Now, if you happen to be low enough, this is just an option today, you can actually bind this pose. If your right elbow is below your right thigh, you might be able to bend that arm, reach underneath the right leg, reach up to find your left set of fingers for a bind, if you'd like, just an option today. And we'll inhale and re-extend the arms floor to ceiling. Let's turn and fold, bring the hands back down to the ground. Slide that right foot back, plank pose, complete your series. Each time might be different. Downward facing dog, take a moment in down dog to feel that nice re-extension of the spine. You can do that by bending the knees a little bit more, sending your hips higher into the air, and even press your hands more firmly into the ground. Other side, inhale, extend left leg up, reaching back, bend your knee, heel down towards backside. The simple lift of the knee creates the automatic rotation and a hip opener. You've got it. Breathing in right where you are, then the exhale to unwind that twist, step through, land with left foot to the top, right heel to the ground behind you, finding your center, floating up to first warrior, exhale opening to your warrior two. Maybe a little wider in the stance if it feels good, if the hips are opening for you. Follow that left hand forward, tip it over into your side angle. Good extension of the arms, reaching towards the ceiling with the right hand. Eventually bring the right hand down behind you or to right hip. Stay here or if you want to add that bind, feel free if you happen to be low enough. Okay? Even if you're getting that hand underneath but the fingers don't meet, that's okay. There we go. So just adding a bit of a bind right there. And we'll inhale, re-extend the arms floor to ceiling, reopening in our turn. Fold, hands to the mat, back to our plank pose. Finish the series, you can always skip these if you need to. Meeting and down dog. Once again, extend your right leg straight up into the air. Keep it straight. Reach through the balls of the foot or pointed toes or even the heel. Inhale. Exhale, step through. Right foot to the top of the mat. This time we're going to high lunge. So your left heel will remain lifted. All ten toes are pointing forward. We still need to find our center so the hands are light. So we can open the lid of the box, rising up to our high lunge. 
reaching up into the air, reach and lunge. Okay, the wider the stance or the more space between the feet, and you might experience a little bit more in this left hip flexor, a little lengthening there. And we're going to rise up to help straighten mostly this front leg. We're going to get prepped for triangle. You're going to Pivot that left heel to the floor. You'll turn sideways to your left. Bring your arms down to parallel right there. We're ready for triangle. Now, if, you've, if there's too much distance between the feet, you can shorten that distance if you'd like. Make sure your right set of toes are pointing forward. And then we'll reach out past that right foot. Angled upper body, rotate the arms. We'll be in our triangle pose. So legs, for the most part, are straight. So we can get into the hamstring of the right leg there. Very good. Breathing. Take your time. To come out of the pose, we're going to start by bending the right knee. So you have a nice lunge and some leverage to come back up and through a warrior two. And then reverse your warrior. There we are. Reaching into the air. Nice extension. Just reach straight up. You can even be, even be slightly forward or even behind you. Then a big cartwheel or windmill. Hands down to the floor in front. We'll step back into plank, but keep the right foot lifted for a moment, just a few inches off the floor, just to add a little dynamic here. Bend that right knee, and then gently set the right knee onto the floor, underneath the hip. Just take a peek up here if you need to see what's happening. I'm gonna swing the right foot off to the right side, making a kickstand, and then turn open to the left side of the room into a side plank pose. So a modified variation with the knee on the floor for a little balance. Good extension to this left hand. Even take it overhead, reaching towards the front of the room if you'd like. If you put a little extra weight into the right hand, just be aware of how this feels on the wrist, you might be able to lift your left foot. Flexing the foot will just keep it energized, yes. Inhale here. Exhale, let's lower everything back down to the floor. So the left hand comes back down, left knee. Bring that kickstand back in. We'll be on all fours, then cat and cow. Inhale, lift head and heart. A little back bend feeling there. Exhale, round it out. Do a few more of these at your own pace. Getting some nice mobility and fluidity through the spine. Experience that rocking of the pelvis. Keeping that wonderful mobility through the back, through the pelvis. Finish the breath you're on and take one more. And finish in this tabletop position. Just look directly down. So you have a neutral neck. You're just looking at the floor between the thumbs. And then return to down dog. Just tuck your toes. Maybe with an exhale, lift your knees, send your hips into the air. Feel how the chest just sinks between the arms. And we'll do that sequence on the other side. So inhale, extend left leg up, straight up and back. Exhale, left foot to the top of the mat for our high lunge. Right heel stays lifted. Again, take your time with these transitions. Shifting back, rising up. All 10 toes are pointing forward. Perfect, right there. Reaching high, lunging low. So just that sensation of going up and down at the same time. Noticing what's happening in the right hip flexor. Then rise up to help straighten that front leg. Pivot right heel to the floor. Turn sideways, drop arms to parallel. Adjust the feet if you need to. We're going to triangle so you can always shorten the stance. And then reach out past that left leg to angle the upper half of the body, even if it's just a little bit. And so your left hand might just rest on your thigh. If you're tipped over more sideways, maybe the hand's closer to the knee, or down to the shin, or even down to the ground. Yeah, just listen to your body, pay attention, make those adjustments if you need to. Breath, always breath. To come out of the posture, we're bending the left knee into a lunge. Give us leverage so we can come back up, pass through your warrior two, so we can reverse our warrior. Good reaching sensation, so you'd have that lengthening quality down through the left side. 
this too can be modified. Reaching behind you puts this, puts your torso in this bend. If that doesn't feel great, you can always just straighten that out. Then our big windmill or cartwheel all the way down and around to the floor in front. Back to plank pose, left foot lifted just a few inches off the floor. Your toes are just an inch off the floor perhaps. But really reaching back with that free foot. Strong upper body as well. We're bending the left knee to set that left knee gently onto the ground below the hip. Make a kickstand with the left foot and then turn sideways. So opening up to the right side of the room, reaching into the air. Yep, that's it. Stay just like this or extend your right hand overhead. A little bit more weight into the left hand. It's just a shift of energy and balance, the center of gravity. So you can pick up the right foot if you'd like, yes. Just getting a little bit more of an extension in the sideways pose. There you go. Breathe in and our exhale to return to the earth. So right hand, right knee, bring your kickstand back in. And again, another series of cat and cow. You can do as many as you need to. Go at your own pace. Certainly pay attention to what's happening. <clears throat> when you create that back bend, ah, the arching of the back, pelvis tipping back, exhaling, tucking it all underneath, belly button pulling up towards your spine, the broadening of the back, chin to chest. Finish this breath. Then take one more. Finish that tabletop position. Okay, then you're going to kind of scoot over towards the right edge of your mat. And then sit back again briefly in hero. And then just sit off to the left side like this, but keep the legs as they are, okay? So hopefully you got a little mat space for your hands on this side. Now you could have the hands kind of far away, all right? But the intention here is to try to sit up as tall as can be. I'm, I'm just doing this for now because this does affect my hips. I need to be sitting on something, which I will in a moment. So you want to bring your hands closer, perhaps, if you're able. Press it. Get as tall as you can, all righty? We'll breathe in just to feel that continued extension. Exhale, draw belly in and just start to rotate okay, towards your left here. Now your right hand or wrist or forearm might be braced against your left thigh just to help you hold your posture. As I just mentioned, sometimes sitting like this kind of displaces the hips and it does affect mine. And so I usually sit up on something. Now this block is kind of thick. I'll probably just use like a folded blanket, something like that, just to kind of even out my hips a little bit better so I can rotate, so I don't strain anything. So just want to be mindful of that. When you get into your poses, do you feel like you're straining yourself? Okay, that might be an indicator just to, you know, change it up a little bit. Move into the posture so it fits your body. All right, to get out of this pose, walk your hands towards the windows or left side of the room, and then crawl up to your hands and knees. Okay, so we're facing forward again, like this. Okay, and then go ahead and just scoot over to the left edge of your mat. Same thing, sitting back into hero, then off to the side. Kind of this little mermaid sitting action over here. Hands over here, pressing into the floor to help extend. That's an inhale and exhale, start a rotation towards the right. And the left hand or arm or wrist might just be slightly braced against that thigh right there, just to really help hold yourself in place. Okay, not to pull yourself into the posture, but just once you have rotated, then the hand can just kind of be there to hold you. Yes. Wonderful. Again, because we have this little bit bit of displacement. Just notice how that feels. Where do the sensations arise in this particular pose? Two more breaths. And again, to come out of the posture, it just softens it up when we start crawling towards that right side, getting out of that rotation, and then climb back up 
two hands and knees. Another series of cat and cow. Just mobilizing the spine again in your hips. Stay here for a moment. If you happen to have a block, and if you need a block, I'll certainly grab you one. Bring your block in. Actually, place it on your, on your left side. I'll get you one. one. Everyone have a block. <clears throat> place your block on your left side, on your mat. Then return to a downward-facing dog. When you're ready, inhale, extend right leg up behind you. Let's open it up again. So bend your knee, a little lift of the knee, and there's a little twist. Unwind, step through, right foot to the top of the mat, back to our Warrior One series. Left heel to the ground, rising up. Exhale, open, Warrior Two. Maybe a wider stance if you can. Side angle, reach, reach more, rotate the arms. Reach up with the left hand, but then bring it down behind you. Again, move into the bind if you'd like. Again, just an option today. All right, we're gonna revolve our pose. So re-extend your arms floor to ceiling. Inhale as you do so. Exhale, bring this left hand down, but bring that block in. So maybe your left hand on your block. Rise up onto your tiptoes behind you. This will align everything. I call this a runner's lunge, like you're about to kind of run forward. In the block, you can turn it as high as you want. You might even want to turn it up even higher, like so, to help lift your upper body, create more space along the waistline so you can get this extension. Because we're going to twist. Take your right arm off to the right side like an airplane wing, and then just rotate to the right until you naturally stop. You don't have to go too far, just like the other twists we've done. Just go until you stop. That's it. Yes, and even that back leg is pretty active, okay? The heel is lifted, but you want to feel like that your calf, even your hamstring, even your glutes feel like they're lifting up <clears throat> towards the ceiling. Inhale right where you are. Exhale, let's unwind. Okay, come to the floor. Let's move this block to the other side, to the right side on the floor. Now plant both hands on the mat. What you'll do here is you're going to sweep your right foot back and up into the air until you're in down dog again, right leg in the sky. Right foot returns to the top of the mat for our high lunge series. Shifting the weight back, balanced body, rise up, reach up. Once you're tall here, keep lifting up, straighten the legs, pivot left heel to the floor, drop arms to parallel, and we'll take our triangle pose. I'm getting back into that hamstring stretch. Good extensions here. We're moving, so bend your right knee, a nice lunge. Come up and through your warrior two, reverse your warrior. Just reaching up somewhere, maybe slightly behind you. But we're coming right out of the pose. Windmill, hands down to the floor in front. Step back, plank pose, right foot lifted. Bring right knee to the floor underneath hip. Make a kickstand, open up to the left side. Extend left arm overhead, maybe lifting left foot. Okay, these are options. This too is an option if you'd like to try it. Bend your left uh, knee, bring your heel toward your backside, reach behind you with the left hand, even maybe just touch the foot back there, or if you're able, grab hold, and you'll end up in the sideways back bend. Wonderful. Release, re-extend those limbs. Carefully turn, return to the earth, hand and knee, bring that kickstand back in. One cat and cow. So actually it's cow first, cat second, hold cat, tuck your toes, lift knees and hips, returning to downward facing dog. And that'll be our series. Inhale, extend left leg into the air, bend and twist open. Unwind, step through, left foot to the top of the mat, warrior one. Our basic flow, take your time. Don't have to rush. Rising up, exhale, opening to warrior two. This is our fluid motions. Side angle pose, reaching out, rotate the body. Nice extension up and down. Right hand comes down behind you. Hold there for a first bind or take second bind where your left arm is reaching underneath, finding the right hand if you like. Perfect. Yes. 
Inhale to re-extend your arms, floor to ceiling, inhale. Exhale, turn, let's bring the right hand to the floor, or actually bring in that block, rise up onto your tiptoes behind you. Here's our runner's lunge, even take that block a little higher so you lift a little higher as well. Feel more extension through the spine. Create that airplane wing with the left arm and here's our rotation to the left. Yes. Strong back leg, it's acting as an anchor. Yes, there you go. There's a, there's a lot more weight coming forward so we need to find that balance as best as we can. Here we go, breathe in. Exhale to unwind. Let's move that block maybe to the left side again. Plant the hands, sweep the left foot back and straight up into the air. High lunge, so rescend, left foot to the top of the mat with an exhale. Right heels lifted, centering, float up. Once you're tall, keep floating up, straightening the legs. Pivot right heel to the floor, turn sideways, arms to parallel. Change the distance between the feet if you need to as you flow right into your triangle pose. Ah, breath. Nice to take that little pause to remind ourselves of the breathing. All right, let's lunge, bend that left knee, leverage to come back up through the warrior two, reverse your warrior, nice reach and stretch. Here comes our windmill down to the floor, back to plank pose, left foot lifted, nice extension. Again, the foot doesn't have to lift too high, bend that left knee, set it gently on the floor underneath the hip, make a kickstand, swing open, here's our sideways posture. Stay just like this or reach overhead with right hand, find that centering so you can lift the right foot, stay here or create a back bend. Bend the knee, hand reaches back, find the ankle or foot, to hold on to or even just touch or just grab the air. Release and extend. Return to the earth, right hand, right knee. Kickstand comes back in, two breaths, cat and cow. Take a child's pose here, but you might take the knees a little wider here as you sit back. We're going to do something with this child's pose, but let's just get into it first. So you feel this, this extension, really. This could be an active child's pose where your hands are reaching out in front, your hips are reaching for the back feet. Let's add a little side bend. So let's start by taking the hands over towards the left corner or left edge of the mat. Really reach more through the right arm and it'll create that lengthening through the right side. Breathe into the right side as you're able. So a little side bend. One more breath. Make your way back to center. You might pause there for a few seconds just to realign. And then take the hands over to the other corner or edge. A little bit of an active reach through the left arm. Notice what's happening down through the left side of your body. Even right down to the belt line. But you still want to feel like your hips are being drawn back to the back edge of your mat. That's one direction while the left arm and hand are reaching in the opposite direction. Two more breaths. Make your way back to center and rise up to hands and knees. Okay, you might bring the knees in underneath the hips. We're gonna thread the needle here. Let's set this up. This is how I typically set this up. So we'll start with the left hand. You're gonna step your left hand forward just a little bit like you're crawling forward just a little bit and then actually step your left hand off to the left side. It might even be off the mat a little bit. 
your middle finger will be pointing forward or upward like you're pointing at a 12 on a clock. And you rotate that hand inward so the middle finger is pointing towards the one or a two on a clock. Put a little weight into that left hand. Airplane wing your right arm. Just reach out and then thread the needle. Bring the right arm down and behind. And the left elbow or left arm will bend and kind of create a little right angle. And that's going to help us get out of the pose eventually. You can always adjust the left hand so it's in a better place. Reaching. Now, if your right shoulder does not reach the floor, because it doesn't have to, just come up onto your forearm, because you can. it'll still create the twist. So you can be here, yeah, if, there, if your shoulder doesn't reach the ground. Three more breaths. And this twist. And your left hand will help you get out of the pose. Push into the floor with the left hand. Lift, unthread. You might even airplane wing the right arm again. Out to the side. And then back down to the earth. Okay, adjust both hands so they're underneath the shoulders. Take a breath. We'll set up the other side. So same thing, right hand steps forward a little bit, then off to the right side, we'll dial it inward, so middle finger is pointing towards the 11 or 10. Airplane wing your left arm, and then thread. All the way down, or even just to forearm, just to create the twist. If you can see me, I'm just down to my forearm or elbow, I'm still in the twist. So you just want to be mindful again of how this feels in the hips, your low back, even your ribs. If you happen to be down on the shoulder, it kind of acts like acupressure since we're just putting a little weight into the body here, pressing into the floor. Two more breaths. And the right arm at a right angle will help you get out of the pose. Just press into the floor, lift, unthread. You extend the left arm as you'd like. Hand to the floor. Pause. Take a breath. Sit back into hero. Swing it off the hands. Just take a seat. Swing the legs around to the front. Find your center on the mat. Roll down onto your back. Little hug. Some active movements here, gentle movements. Okay. Check in with your feet, ankles, toes, even your wrists, because you were just on your hands for a little bit. So free up your hands and maybe just circle the wrists a little bit. Wiggle the fingers. Good. We'll finish with a quick twist to both sides. So taking both knees to the left side, legs can be stacked here. The first time we did this twist, we did kind of the staggered legs and that windshield wiper. You can do that again if you want, or just have the stacked legs while your right arm perhaps extends out to the right side. That too is optional. If that feels like it pulls too much on the shoulder or pectoral area, just keep the right arm down by your side. We're not going to be here too long because we've done a number of twists, maybe just two more. Just want to give you some time in Shavasana. A careful return to center. If you still are in that twist and need to be there for a little longer, feel free. And then knees to the other side, the optional left arm extension, or just resting by your side, mindful of how this feels in your body. breath or two. Making your way back to center when you're ready. 
and then finally into Shavasana. Just extending the legs out in front, arms resting down by your side. This is just an option as well as far as your uh, finishing pose, fully relaxed. But find any other restorative position that might be lying on your side today or lying flat on your back with, with knees bent, with feet on the floor. That might feel more comfortable. You can even come to seated. Return to the awareness of your breath. Simply notice your breath. Take five slow, deep breaths. The intention here is to allow movement to return to your body, to feel a new energy flow through your body. Perhaps with our twisting postures in our practice today, we're able to release and let go of things that no longer serve you physically, emotionally, mentally. Experience the flow of your breath, just as you experience the flow of your body in our class today. And then after your fifth breath, take your time, move very slowly and roll onto either side of your body into a nurturing pose. A little pause right there. And then continue to move very slowly and rise to a seated position. And once you're here, you can just keep your hands in your lap if you'd like or bring hands to heart center. And then just take one more full, deep breath. Nice. And as we come to the close of our practice together, we bow saying, Namaste. 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 Thank you so much for watching and participating in this yoga lesson. To help us with the channel so we can continue to bring you more content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's really appreciated. Namaste.